So, you think you might have celiac disease, but what does the test involve? In this video, we're going to be covering how celiac disease is currently investigated using information and resources from the United Kingdom. If you don't live in the UK, this may be different depending on where you live. Now, as way of background, celiac disease is a condition where your immune system attacks your own tissues when you eat gluten. Gluten is a dietary protein found in three types of cereal, wheat, barley, and rye. This damages your gut, also known as the small intestine, so you're unable to take in nutrients. Celiac disease can cause a range of symptoms, including things like diarrhea, abdominal pain, as well as bloating. Gluten can be found in any food that contains those cereals, including pasta, cakes, breakfast cereals, most types of bread, certain types of sauces, as well as some ready meals. Now, currently in the UK, testing for celiac disease involves two things. Firstly, a blood test to help identify people who might have celiac disease, and then this is followed by a biopsy of part of the bowel, known as the small intestine, to confirm the diagnosis. While being tested for celiac disease, you should eat foods containing gluten to ensure that the tests are accurate. So this means eating gluten in more than one meal a day for a minimum of six weeks before testing is performed. It's really important that you don't start a gluten-free diet until the diagnosis is confirmed by a specialist, even if the results of the blood test are positive. So let's talk about the first test, which is really important, and that's the blood test. So your doctor will arrange a blood test to check for antibodies, usually present in the blood of people with celiac disease. In the UK, the first line test is something called serum immunoglobulin IgA tissue transglutamase, and a total IgA. Now, that's a really long word, but these are essentially antibodies, also called immunoglobulins, which are proteins that recognize and get rid of germs. If celiac disease antibodies are found in your blood, then your doctor will typically refer you for a biopsy of your intestine. And remember, it is really important to include gluten in your diet when the blood test is being done, because avoiding it could lead to an inaccurate result. Now, it's sometimes possible to have celiac disease and not have these antibodies in your blood. So if you continue to have symptoms of celiac disease despite having a negative blood test, your doctor may either repeat the blood test or still recommend that you have the biopsy. So that leads us nicely on to the second part, which is the biopsy. So a biopsy is the diagnostic test and it's done in hospital, usually by a doctor who specializes in stomach and bowel conditions called a gastroenterologist. A biopsy can help confirm the diagnosis of celiac disease. Now, when you have the biopsy, a thin, flexible tube with a light and camera at one end, called an endoscope, will be inserted into your mouth and passed down to your small intestine. Before the procedure, you'll be given a local anaesthetic to numb your throat and perhaps a sedative to help you relax. Now, the gastroenterologist will pass the tiny biopsy tool through the endoscope to take samples of the lining of your small intestine. The sample will then be examined under a microscope for signs of celiac disease. So after the diagnosis is confirmed, you may have other tests to assess how celiac disease has affected you. You may have more blood tests to check the level of iron and other vitamins and minerals in the blood. This will help determine whether the celiac disease has caused problems such as iron deficiency anemia, which is where there is a lack of iron in your blood from poor absorption of nutrients. If you've got something called dermatitis herpetiformis, which is an itchy rash, and I've made a more detailed video on this, which you can see the link on screen now, you may have a skin biopsy to confirm it. Although often this diagnosis can simply be done by the doctor looking at it in clinic if they know you have celiac disease. If a biopsy is needed, then this can be done under local anaesthetic, and it involves a small skin sample being taken from the affected area, so it can be examined under the microscope. You may also need a DEXA scan, and that can be recommended if your doctor thinks your condition may have affected your bones. That's because in celiac disease, the poor absorption of nutrients can make bones weak and brittle, a condition known as osteoporosis. A DEXA scan is a special type of x-ray that measures bone density to see whether you're at risk of bone fractures as you get older. So many people feel overwhelmed when they're first diagnosed with celiac disease. 
Switching to a gluten-free diet can be really confusing, particularly if you're eating foods that contain gluten for many years. In the first few months after being diagnosed, many people accidentally eat foods that contain gluten, which may trigger a return of your symptoms. You can learn more about celiac disease and receive practical advice about following a gluten-free diet from your local celiac disease support group. Here in the UK, the Celiac UK website provides information and advice about celiac disease plus details of support groups in your area. And I've included that link in the description box of the video, so please do check that out. I've also included further resources and reading in the description box, including links to helpful websites with lots more information about celiac disease. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for weekly medical education videos. And as always, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section and I will do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and until next time, bye.